I've been watching a lot of Dateline lately. I don't know what that has to do with anything. Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today is my 30th birthday. Well, by the time you're watching it, it will no longer be my birthday, but I am filming this on my birthday. I decided to just sit down, chit chat. It's extremely random. I will go ahead and warn you um, and just get ready for my inside birthday party. <laughs> All right, so if you want to see kind of what's going on on my face and chat with me for a while, then just stick around. I just put on my moisturizer. I'm going to use products today that I know and have used before because I don't really like to take chances on a day where I know there's going to be pictures. And since this is my 30th birthday, you know, I'm sure we will take pictures. So I'm actually really excited. We're, you know, we're just gonna order in like sushi. My mom's baking a cake because my mom is here. I have not seen my mom in, oh my gosh, before now, I had not seen my mom in almost five months, which is crazy for me. I am someone who is really close. I'm really close with my mom. So this is the longest I think that I've been <laughs> my entire life without seeing my mom and it was really hard. So obviously I'm extremely excited that my mom is here because I just can't imagine like if I, you know, I'm, I wonder, like I have a daughter, so what's she gonna be doing on her 30th birthday? I cannot think like that. It will it will upset me. Oh my gosh, my hands are slippery and I can't get them. Oh my gosh. So like I said, I'm using products that I know and kind of trust and I wanted to use my Dior brow, but I don't know why I cannot find it. So I'm using this baby hair one from Oma Beauty. I did just use this for the first time a few weeks ago, but I really liked it. Um, in a brow pencil, all I really care about is that it's very, very fine strokes and that the color matches right. And this Oma one was really good on both counts. So this will work just fine. I feel like I went a little too heavy at the front there. I don't know why. I've been liking doing my brows before my foundation. For years I did it that way and recently, I would say like maybe the last mm, year or so, I stopped doing that. I started doing them just, you know, whenever I was finished with my eye look. But what I really like about doing brows before I even do my foundation is I feel like if you're someone who likes a more natural brow, it just kind of, I don't know, I think it looks more natural when you go over it and you do your foundation. I don't put foundation on top of my brows, but I think it's just something about um, kind of them just being on when I do the foundation around them. It kind of just rubs it off a little bit and makes it a little more worn in, a little more natural looking. So I've been enjoying that. So my mom is here and also my youngest brother's girlfriend is here and she's just such a sweetheart. So I'm so excited that they got to come. I just, I really wanted to be able to go to North Carolina and see my dad and my brothers, but just, I don't know what the way things are. We just weren't comfortable taking a road trip right now. So it made me really happy that my mom was able to come because obviously, you know, she's an adult. My brother's uh, girlfriend is an adult. So they don't have to make as many stops as you have to make when you have a baby in the car. So it was a little bit, well, I would say a lot easier for them to just come to us. And I'm really glad that it worked out that they could come because I don't know. I think I would have been like really sad if I wasn't with, um, if I wasn't able to see my mom on my birthday. I think that would have really made me a little extra sad because definitely not being able to see my family as much as I normally do has been, I would say, the hardest part of things for me. And adding on top of that, that I have to be honest, turning 30 is pretty much the most surreal thing that has <laughs> happened to me yet. It's just interesting to think like, oh, I'm 30 now. It's not like in a bad way. Like I don't want it to seem like, oh, like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm so old because for me, I've always felt like the older I get, the younger I realize I am. <laughs> I think that's something that kind of happens to a lot of people. I feel like the older I get, the younger I realize I am, and it's like the more I realize I don't know. <laughs> um, there's a song my dad loves, and I love as well. Um, I think it's, 
I know Bob Dylan sings it. Did he write it though? I think he did. It's called My Back Pages. And there's basically the gist of it is I was so much older than I'm younger than that now. And I think it's just kind of, I don't know. I find that to be a really realistic thing that, you know, when you're younger, you think you know so much. And the older I have gotten, the more I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Beep. <laughs> like, it's just the truth. You know, you get older and you realize, you know, you don't know everything. And you know, I wish I knew as much as I, as I did when I was, I don't know, I guess when I was 20. I mean, I think that's the craziest part is to look back over the course of a decade. And, you know, for me, the last full decade I lived was from 10 to 20. And I don't think you're as cognizant of everything. And so definitely from 20 to 30, I'm a lot more aware of how much growth there's been, how many changes. It's just kind of crazy to think about how much changes in 10 years. And not just like the outside world, because gosh, what a different world it is than it was in 2010. Um, but also just you change, you grow so much over 10 years. Well, if you're doing it right, you should grow. I guess there are probably a lot of people that don't. I mean, to be honest, I know people much older than I am that seem to have kind of stagnated <laughs> maybe in their teens but you know it's just really surreal that I'm 30. I have gone back to my just all-time fave this is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer because I've really liked the finish of a couple other concealers lately but one thing I've noticed is that I've seen some kind of some lines um Recently I used the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk and I talked about that. I used it in my Natasha Denona tutorial. Tutorial? Tutorial. And I talked about how the finish is so beautiful and it really was. But when I went back and edited that video, I had all these little fine lines showing. I was like, excuse me? No, I do not think so. <laughs> and I mean, maybe I powder a little much, but I always use the same setting powder and I have not had that issue. So I think it was really that concealer. And so I am today using my, just my fail safe, my, you know, just holy grail, which is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, because I can always trust that that one is gonna make my under eyes look really nice. So I'm also gonna just use a brush to set this today rather than a sponge, because I wanna keep it really light. I do wanna set it, but I don't want to kind of over saturate my under eye with powder. I think that's something that is becoming much more of a concern to me. I need like some, oh, I got powder in my mouth and it tastes like crap and I do not know how this keeps happening to me. So for my eyes today, I definitely want to kind of go with something not too heavy. I kind of just want to go more like, I was honestly, I was like looking up bridal looks earlier. <laughs> I don't know why in my mind I was like, yeah, I just want to look like myself, but better. I feel like that's such a cliche. <laughs> Everyone says that, but I just kind of want something that is going to, you know, look nice in pictures for years to come. I'm not going to do anything too dramatic. Just going to kind of keep it simple. And yeah, I think I'm going to try to use this Natasha Denona gold palette. But <laughs> um, I am definitely going to have to sub in some shades. Ugh, that's the thing. I love this palette so much. If you haven't seen it before, this is what it looks like. It's just absolutely beautiful. It's such a beautiful palette, but I definitely often find that I kind of need to sub in a couple shades. I feel that way kind of about all of her palettes. So I'm just taking, I think this is the color Sandstone. I'm kind of going to keep everything close to the outer edge. I'm not really wanting to bring too much into the inner corner because I want to kind of do not the same as my Natasha Denona bronze tutorial, but I kind of want to do that same concept of elongating the eye rather than going too far up. I just want to kind of keep everything on the edge, like that outer V. By the way, I'm a liar. That was Aria. I don't know why I thought that it was sandstone, but whatever. Um, it's kind of funny though, because when I think about the past 10 years, from 20 to 30, you know, I've mentioned on my channel before in a video that I have wanted to start this channel for 10 years. It took me 10 years to start. 
And you know what, in some ways I, I still kind of wish I would have started sooner, but I don't know, I really kind of look at my life now and I so believe in the timing of my life at this point. I just feel like I'm in a stage where I feel so immensely blessed. Like, honestly, I kind of wish that I could go back to different times in my 20s and just let myself know, hey, it's gonna be, oh my God, am I gonna cry? No, I'm not gonna cry while I'm doing my makeup. I just, woo. You guys, you're like, what the heck is going on, Ashley? I'm not gonna cry. I just mean that, you know, my 20s weren't always great. I went through some, some really big struggles. Um, I went through some really hard times. I had, you know, some rough outside things happen. I had times that I struggled a lot with my anxiety. I always kind of tried to tell myself like, it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna get to a place where, you know, I'm gonna look back and realize that, you know, all of this was for a reason, which is so cliche, right? So cliche. So just to finally be on the other side where I'm not saying life is perfect by any stretch of the imagination now, but to just be on the other side where I can really say, you know what? Yeah, like I am at a good place with myself. I am so blessed. I have a beautiful family. I have a really supportive and amazing husband, which I mean, oh my gosh, there are times in my 20s that if you would have told me that I would find someone that would care about me and take care of me and support me and support, you know, I don't want to say like my dreams. I don't want to be silly here. <laughs> not that dreams are silly, but I mean, not just my dreams, but just who I am as a person. Like if you would have told me that I would be able to find someone who would just be extremely accepting of me as I am, I would have thought it was bull crap. So to be at that place, it's just, oh my gosh, it's so surreal. Like I said, it's so surreal. And you know what? It has nothing to do with age really when I think about it. You know, my dad has always really stressed to me that everything comes in its own time. Life is not a race and everybody is on their own time. And that's something I would really stress that, you know, if you're in a place in your life where, you know, things aren't where you want them to be, it doesn't matter how old you are. Don't ever think like, oh, well, I'm 30 and I don't have those things, or I'm older than, I'm 35 and I don't yet have the person I wanna be with. I don't yet have a family. Like, life is not a race and everything is gonna come in its own time to you because you are on your own journey. And that's something that like, I, I really, I really kind of lived it. <laughs> I really kind of lived it because for so long I just wanted all the things to come to me and I didn't understand why <laughs> they weren't coming and um you know i just had to kind of wait it out and you know live my life in the meantime and i did i lived <laughs> lived my life so i'm taking kaba now i'm kind of gonna Ooh, let's see how i like that oh yeah oh yeah that's nice that's nice kind of doing this on i was oh my gosh i was watching these bridal tutorials and I don't know why, but like everyone I watched was talking about the mobile lid. And I was like, why have I never called it the mobile lid? I've never used that term. I've definitely heard it before, but I was like, that's just not a term I, I really use very often. I don't know why. I mean, it, they were all from different people. I just love, oh my gosh. Are, are you guys the same? When I have like an event or I know that I'm gonna have some time to just really put into my makeup, I will just Google away, well, I'll search away on YouTube for kind of different tutorials. I just love to watch tutorials. Even the ones that I know like, oh yeah, I wouldn't go for that look. I'm not gonna use that. I still really like to watch them. I think it's because, you know, back in the day, you know, back when I was 20, 10 years ago, you know, watching YouTube videos, that was the big thing. That was really what the beauty community was, was just tutorials after tutorials. It's kind of, it's morphed a lot, I think in some good ways, some bad ways, but you know, that's kind of the nature of things. They they grow and they evolve. So I like the good parts of the beauty community still. And I think that it's definitely better, I mean, I don't know if it's better today than it was 
in 2010, but I think that it's just as good as long as you, you know, kind of follow the right people. There are plenty of really lovely people on YouTube. So I actually have filmed the My Beauty Community tag several times at this point, and I just, <laughs> different things keep messing up. Like one, my lighting was really screwed up. Um, another take, my audio did not work. So I'm gonna, film it a third time and I'm going to get it out because there are so many people that I absolutely really do love their channels, love the community that they bring and the different kind of perspectives they bring to the beauty community. So I'm going to, I'm going to get that finally, finally up at some point <laughs> soon. I'm just going to take like a brown liner from, this is Pat McGrath, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, Pat McGrath, you special, wonderful snowflake. I love you. I have never used snowflake to mean anything rude. My cousin used to always, my older cousin Lauren, used to always like be like, oh, aren't you a special snowflake? But like, not in a negative way. And now people say it in a negative way. So weird. I have never said that in a way that was like meant to be rude to anybody. <laughs> I really don't say anything in a way that's meant to be rude to anybody. <laughs> so I took this Marc Jacobs pencil eyeliner pencil in sunset and did that on my bottom water line i got really stumbled up on that one and then on the bottom i just took teak and log from this gold palette i did it on like this little smudger brush really close to the lash line and then i took a clean pencil brush and just smoked it out a little bit extra and now i'm really happy with that and i want to get everything else kind of cleaned up i didn't bake originally but now i kind of want to just bake a tiny bit right here to just brighten this up not like bake bake but just like kind of set it there and then brush it away really quickly just because i feel like it looks a little dark in there it's kind of fun because i think of all the different ways my makeup has changed over the past 10 years like i've gone through so many different phases of what i like the only thing that probably hasn't changed is that i've always always loved warm colors <laughs> i've always loved warm eyeshadows i've always loved just a good bronze I look today I kind of used more of those gold tones I just chose to use the gold palette because I don't know I haven't used it as much as I really would have liked to have used it since I got it so using the bronze palette actually has kind of given me some ideas for different ways I can use this gold palette and I like that it's warm but it's not too warm so it definitely has its own place I think I'm kind of just laying this Fenty Cream bronzer down with, this is a Pro Foundation brush from Sephora. And what I figured out that I like is just to lay it down with this brush and then go behind and blend it in with my foundation brush, the one that I used that day. That's where I found that I get the best results out of this cream bronzer. I really, really like this cream bronzer. I have been reaching for it I think like all the time. I, I never want to say every time I do my makeup because I know I do switch it up a little bit, but it's been the one that I've turned to the most since I have gotten it. It is really nice. I'm gonna brighten up the center of my face a little bit. I'm trying to hurry up because I'm supposed to do my mom's makeup. Well, I said I was gonna start five minutes ago. <laughs> So a little bit behind. Um, I'm going to do my mom's makeup, my mother-in-law's makeup, and my brother's sister's, my brother's sister, my brother's girlfriend's makeup. I love to do makeup. I have, oh my gosh, for years and years. I really first got into makeup when I was 19, and then it really became a, a big passion for mine when I was 20. I was just in a really bad place in my life. I'd gone through some really tough times and makeup was this really awesome thing that kind of took my mind off of everything and it was something that I could just focus my mind on and not have to think about kind of anything bad going on and I really loved that. I just, it was such a freeing thing for me. So I really have always just had a passion for makeup. I've never been like a professional makeup artist. I was a rep for Chanel in my early 20s. Where is my... I literally lose this brush all the time, you guys. I was a rep for Chanel in my early 20s and that was such a fun experience. I really, 
really enjoyed that. But I just, I don't know, that was not gonna be, it just wasn't gonna be like a career for me. It just was something that was a job that I really enjoyed doing <laughs> while I did it. So I've always really enjoyed doing makeup and I've always done it for friends and family for special occasions, but I've never been like, oh, I'm a makeup artist and <laughs> I like work or anything. That's just never, I don't know. I think that I'm just too um, anxious of a person. <laughs> I think I would be too stressed out if people I didn't know were depending on me to do their makeup for their wedding. Like that would give me, I would have a legitimate panic attack, legitimately. Legitimately? How many times can I say legitimately? So I decided that for my birthday, I thought like it would be really fun for me to do, you know, my makeup, take some time to get ready and then also do their makeup because for me, that's just something really fun to do. I have always loved to just do like makeovers and do makeup for different folks because I usually get a lot of compliments on my makeup from the people in my life. I guess that's all the YouTube videos I watch paying off. Um, so since I usually get so many compliments, I always like to, you know, try to do other people's makeup and just see, you know, if they like it. Usually they do, sometimes they don't. <laughs> Most of the time they do, but I'm not out here like, you know, I'm not a rouge or anything like that. I'm just, you know, a regular, you know, person who likes to do makeup. I feel like that's most of us here that have kind of been in the beauty community here on YouTube, like watching videos for a long time. I feel like we kind of all share that in common that we just really loved we love makeup. Doesn't necessarily mean it's, you know, something we're professionally good at. We just enjoy it. I draped my blush a little bit there. I talked about that in my most recent tutorial. Actually, it's the only tutorial on my channel, which was so nerve wracking, you guys. It was so nerve wracking to do a tutorial. I was like, oh my gosh, like I am not a professional makeup artist. I don't know what to tell you. But then I realized, you know, and my husband told me, you know, just you can talk about how you do your makeup. Your makeup looks good. Just talk about what you do. So he was right and I did, but it was so nerve wracking to film that video and to edit it and to put it up. So I really appreciate everyone that took the time to watch it and left nice comments because it was, really fun for me and I really enjoyed kind of just talking about that look because that's actually one of my favorite looks. I, that's a go-to look for me. I do that with all different kinds of color schemes and palettes. That's just really, when I say all different kinds of color schemes, I mean within the neutral family. <laughs> but um, it's just, it's a look that I really turn to a lot because I love the way that it looks on my eyes. I sometimes like a blown up smoky eye, but more times than not, I prefer something that's a little bit more elongated. You know, the focus is more on the outer V because I like that. It just feels really feminine and I don't know, I like it. All right, we're gonna finish up with lips. For lips today, I am finally gonna wear the infamous, often talked about, I don't know why I keep trying to do this, you guys. Every video, I try to talk while I do my lip liner. Knowing daggum well that lip liner is like one of the hardest steps for me because I have this extremely defined lip line. But, okay, what I was gonna say before my lip liner so rudely interrupted our conversation. Today, you guys, I'm going to finally wear for you the infamous, often talked about on this channel, MAC Faux. This is my favorite color of all time, you guys. I love this lip color so much. It's just so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Mm. I do have a lip liner on it that's kind of shifting it a little bit darker than it normally is. But you guys, it's the most beautiful lip color in the planet. I love this lip color. I love it so much. It's so flattering. It's so flattering. And that satin finish, oh my gosh. I talk about this all the time. If this is your first time here, then you don't know. If it's not your first time here, then you've most likely seen a video where I've talked about this because probably in the majority of my videos, I at some point reference this lip color. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. If you are similar in skin tone to me, try it out. Just give it a shot. Let me know what you think. Am I crazy or is it the best, best lipstick color of all time? I don't know. You decide. 
I've been watching a lot of Dateline lately. I don't know what that has to do with anything. All right, we're gonna finish out with my favorite setting spray of all time. It is the Cover FX High Performance Setting Spray. Woo, feels so good. Feels so good. I feel like I look okay for 30. Haha. <laughs> it's funny, I remember when I thought 30 was, was old and now that I am 30, I'm like, wow, yeah. Definitely not as old as I, as I anticipated. Not by a mile. Is there anything else I want to do? Oh, I do want to brush out my lash extensions and put on some lower lash mascara and then I'm done. I'm ready to do my mommy's makeup, make some mojitos, enjoy some sushi, and have a very happy birthday. Whoop. All right, guys, this is the finished look. Oh, these are just all products that I really love and recommend. Everything that I use today is a product that I have tried many, many times over and really trust because for me on a birthday, special occasion, I want to be able to trust the makeup that I am putting on my face to not give me a hard time. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry that I was kind of all over the place, but you know, I'm a very introspective person on the best of days. Uh, so on birthdays, I think I just get a little extra sentimental and introspective. And I hope that you enjoyed this video and kind of jumping around all over the place with me today. As always, I hope to see you in the next video. And until then, chat with me down below or over on Instagram. Until next time, please take care of yourself. Bye.